If it hadn't already been up to Sky to control the race, it certainly was by stage eight because their man was leading it. With Bradley Wiggins in yellow, it was Sky's responsibility to check the brakes for dangerous SKPs and decide who could and couldn't be allowed to go for the glory of a stage win. In the end, it was the youngest man in the race who got away, and for the first time, there was no catch by the bunch. Mark Maddio, twice winner of Paris-Roubaix, shouting here at the leader as we can now see uh, Thibaut driving on. He's not safe by any matter of means here. He has got a drive on now and he'll be saying to himself, I'm not going to get this close to the finish and somebody robbed me of my first Tour de France stage victory. When you're in a position like this, you can push that pain barrier just a little bit further back and try to ignore it. And that's what he's doing. He, can, he knows if he's done the calculations, he can lose 12 seconds per kilometre and still stay in front of this race. But it's very easy if you hit the wall to lose that amount of time. Well, in some ways, it will be an absolute sporting tragedy if the Frenchman were to be caught now. But the big names of the Tour de France are all together and they are riding as one. Froome started the day in uh, no ninth, ninth position, looking for 1 minute 32. And he's gaining time on everybody else. Vicenzo Nibar, it's amazing to see the big names of the sport and they're all collaborating together to put time between themselves and the men who were left behind on that final climb, the Col de la Croix. What a beast it turned out to be. It would be an incredible sprint and will be, whatever the case, for win or for third place by this group because there is not a pure sprinter among them in it. These are the riders for the GC, the overall standings. 50 seconds, the board is now showing the Frenchman. He saw it, he kicks again. And they've wiped out Kessiakov. Kessiakov checks out the quality and think, my goodness me, everybody who's anybody in the Tour de France is right here. And there's no big peloton, so he'll slot in if he can. It's one man now, the youngest man in the Tour de France versus the most serious contenders for the Tour de France. 41 seconds. Well, they're slowing down because in that last minute, they just hacked off another five seconds. They're pulling out all of the cars now. That's always a bad sign, but this man gets closer and closer to the finish line. He will be dreaming now of a victory, but he cannot Can't slow dream. down. He's got to just concentrate on the job in hand. But as we come round one of the flyovers here now, it is a Frenchman trying to wind his way into the finish in Porrentui. He has a just under, just over three kilometers to go, and he's far from safe as he kicks again. Three minutes, three kilometers, Phil, is going to take him inside of four minutes to get to the finishing line. Oh, well My done My goodness there. me, where's he gone? That was agile, that was clever. He was thinking because if he'd gone round that roundabout the yep. other way, Phil, it would have been a longer distance and he would have lost a few more seconds. It goes to show that he's thinking properly, he's still concentrating. There's the compact chase group. They've gone the long way round. Oh, no, they haven't. They've changed their minds. Well, don't forget, Phil, these are seasoned professionals. These are men who know how to win some of the biggest bike races in the world. But I'll tell you one thing. They are shaving off five seconds off his lead in every minute at the moment. And that, my, my calculation means, this man is going to survive as long as he can keep this tempo riding up. 37 seconds, we're looking for two kilometers. That looked to me like a Radio Shack rider who stole a little lead. If it is, then the other Radio Shack riders will try to slow the chase down. And that could become advantage Pino. Into town, downtown, a beautiful little Swiss town in the canton of the Jura. The crowd are going ballistic here, not for a Swiss rider, but for a French rider. And that, in fact, is Jürgen Vandenbroek who's jumped out of that gap. The jerseys are very confusing yeah, at the moment. From the they sky. all look very, very similar because they've got a black shoulder and a white patch down the middle. Now that's a very good move by Jürgen van der Boek. He's a player for overall. We're crossing Porrentwe. Enjoy the atmosphere of the tour. Madio there, twice winner at Paris-Roubaix. This is at one of his huge moments of his career to see this young kid race for gold. Well, I don't think you have to translate that, do you, Phil? No. Too bad, Gagné. You are going to win. He is convinced now. One and a half kilometres to go. Well, we're hearing that Cadell Evans is launching a lone attack from the group. Now, how Wiggins is going to respond to that? We're looking at Jürgen Vandenbroek, and that is Cadell Evans trying to reach him. Well, he did this in the recent Criterium du Dauphiné, and they cannot allow Bradley Wiggins to sit back. Watch this, Bradley Wiggins has seen this move. The excitement is all at the front. 
This is an amazing Tour de France. We are one kilometre to go. The young Frenchman is trying to win. Cadell Evans is trying to get 11 seconds to become the leader of the Tour. Now, that is an incredible move by Evans. Evans will fight every inch of the way. We've still got two weeks to go in this Tour de France. What he's trying to do here, Phil, is try and steal the yellow jersey away from Bradley Wiggins to start tomorrow's time trial in last position so he can get the advantage of the time checks. This is a superb ride by the youngest man in the Tour de France and his friends. When they built the motorway locally, they found bones from the Jurassic era. That explains the, uh, the dinosaur there. Now he's got it and he salutes Marc Madio. This is a huge moment in French cycling because of his age. And it's always great when you can win on a Sunday in the Tour de France because it makes the front page of all of the Monday morning newspapers. And Marc Madio will know all about that, having won Paris-Roubaix on two occasions. Look at the joy. Well, Marc Madio has chosen some great riders for his French team over the years, but he's sure found a great one now. This is it. He's getting ready to throw his arms in the air. His first Tour de France, the youngest man in the race. He can salute his public, even if we are on Swiss roads now. But the interest for us is behind him. Is Cadell Evans going to steal 11 seconds and become the leader of the Tour? And the answer is no. He's back in the pack. It's well, a sprint for second place. Well, Bradley Wiggins was very attentive indeed. You can see there they're lining this up for Tolly Gallopin to try and get second place. Well, he is a good sprinter and he might be the best, but Evans is going to have a go at him as well. Cadell Evans has no time bonuses. Wiggins is following him to make sure he's got the same time. Well done, Cadell. That's a great second place. So no change at the very top, but Rain Taramer had been dropped while Chris Froome had moved up again to sixth. And that was the way things stood, going into what was expected to be the next big shakeout at the top, the first long individual time trial.